Uh, and for a long time, people have thought it might be the something called a glycogen body that we see in birds. Except, and it may very well be a glycogen body, but nobody knows what a glycogen body does in a bird. <laughs> so, we find these enlarged areas of the sacrum, of the sacral neural canal, in basically all of these dinosaurs. And we have absolutely no idea what they are. And, like I say, they exist in birds, and we have no idea what they are in birds either. That's how much we don't know about So, what about that that T Rex leg that you and Mary Schweitzer have that has that soft material in it? Did you have in your freezer? <laughs> the soft tissue. Yeah, yeah. We, we have lots of it. We have blood vessels. We've got cells. We've got all sorts of things. They're, they're, the preservation is exquisite. We we keep finding it. Uh, it's preserved. Um, the, the fixative is iron. Mm -hmm. It could, because it was so sealed tightly, may have preserved it, yeah. like vacuum or vacuum. Yeah. yeah, you know, any almost anything will preserve if bacteria doesn't get to it. Right. To consume it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, the Pachycephalosaurus, they could have had something attached to them. But that they look like they had something so, like, really big attached to them. Mm -hmm. Could have had like something sprouting out of their head, but maybe a frill. Like a frill? Yeah, kind of like the one from the, the Dilophosaurus and the <laughs> Maybe. You know, use your imagination. You can put anything. <laughs> that might have a it's an outdoor. I like um, when you show the spinosaurus tool, right, at the front of their snout, mm -hmm. it has pores in it, right? They yeah, that's why they have nerves. Yeah. Like an alligator. Though. Yeah, so could they have used those in a similar way to alligators use? Mm -hmm. Probably. More than likely. Convergent evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you were talking about um, fossils in private collections that don't have specific GPS data, which are useless to science. So wasn't there a nanotyrannosaurus in someone's private collection, or alleged nanotyrannosaurus? That's the Larson study that said that it proved that many nanotransports are a separate species. I, I know nothing about that. It seems like it's mysterious and it's not well, really no, scientific. Nobody's gonna, no, a scientist isn't going to pay any attention to it. Okay. And Peter Larson is a commercial collector, so yeah. who knows? You know, it, it's unfortunate. I, I know Peter very well, but you know he's, he's got a conflict of interest. Yeah. You know, he's got a a museum he claims he's got he's a scientist because he's got a museum but he's also selling fossils so but have you uh, had a chance to look at that by any chance never i don't look at anything that is commercially collected it's just there's no reason to i mean it, they just don't unless that commercial collector can take me out to the site and let me see the fossil in the ground then then i then i'm all for it but but when they excavate them, they keep it all a secret, mm -hmm. yeah. it's useless. Mm -hmm. Little girl. Um, oh. <laughs> we'll take the little one first. <laughs> <laughs> the dinosaurs they can sing? I have two questions. Um, the dinosaurs they can sing, um, is it supposed to be something that looks like a dinosaur that acts like a chicken, or is it something uh, you know, I'd like it to. I'd like it to kind of look like a dinosaur, <laughs> and and I I suspect it is going to act like a chicken. And, yeah. and how do you and how do you document document your fossils? How do I document them? Like how do you document document fossils? Well, when I'm collecting a fossil, I have a GPS with me, and I get its exact location, and then. I look at the rock that it's in, I take lots of pictures. Mm -hmm. If I don't have a geologist with me, I take lots of pictures so that a geologist can see where I am. 
And then when I collect the fossil, I, co I collect stuff around it as well. It, it depends on what it is. If it's just a clam shell, just the GPS data probably will work. But if it's a dinosaur skeleton, then I want lots of information with it, right? Yeah. Then, because information is more useful than the specimen for science. Yeah. I guess I also had a question about the dinosaurs. Um, so say you actually managed to make it into a dinosaur, would you... First off, birds are dinosaurs, so it's already a dinosaur. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it is. It's a, birds are dinosaurs, so, so I, I mean, that's, that's, you know, I'm kind of cheating, right? <laughs> Making a dinosaur out of a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so say so you actually succeeded, um, would you destroy it before it actually had time to like? If I can make a dinosaur, I'm going to bring it in as a pet. <laughs> You've obviously seen Jurassic World and Jurassic Park, don't you? They're fiction. <laughs> fiction, fiction, fiction. In all of Steven Spielberg's movies, everything is dangerous. Yeah. Everything wants to eat somebody, a human being. That's more fun. Alright. Yeah, now. You know, we can. The nice thing is, we can go to the Serengeti plain and see lions, and we can see all kinds of wild animals that would normally eat you. And as long as you keep your window rolled up, you're safe. <laughs> They're not going to break into your car like a Velociraptor will into your car. So going back to this idea or the need for people, for amateur collectors to document uh, where and how, has there been any organized way that people generally will take this data in. Like you say, that you take the pictures and find the geologists or what have you. Um, with all the different paleontology clubs, I would think there's got to be some room for somebody to kind of organize this somehow or another. Yeah. Or find some yeah, kind well, of data. That'd, I mean, that'd, that'd be, be nice, great, that'd know, be great for a club to do. <laughs> the thing is, you know, a lot of people have collections. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, as you get older, if you wanted to get rid of the collection, give it to a museum, you could give it to a museum if it had documentation with it. Right. And then it would always be in the in their museum collection with your name on it. I mean, it would be a cool thing to do, but when it has no information with it, it's going to go in the garbage. You know, I mean, the cool thing is, is that is that, you know, amateurs are really important to the field of paleontology. And, and we're always trying to encourage all amateurs to to do the best they can to collect data yeah. and donate specimens to museums because you know the Museum of the Rockies where I worked for many years a lot of the specimens were collected by amateurs a whole bunch of them and and you know they're and they're all you can go to the museum and you can and you can read about the amateur help that I mean, it's all labeled, right? So, but, and everything in collections is. I mean, it's, like I say, amateurs are very important. It's commercial collectors that, oftentimes commercial collectors try to bring into, bring amateurs into their fold and say that scientists are against amateurs because, I mean, that, that's done a lot. And and I fight that a lot. Amateurs are very important to our science. I was one, and all of my friends were. And the most important thing is just documentation. Little kid over there. Yes. Um, about the dinosaurs. I'm saying um, I in a in a video that I watched for playing a dinosaur um. There's Say that again. Um, in a video that I watched, Planet Dinosaur. Um, Planet Dinosaur? Yeah, Planet mm -hmm. Dinosaur. Um, the first video, um, when the Spinosaurus, um, when there was fish, um, that it likes to eat, well, um, what kind of dinosaurs would it eat? Um, when it's a slow runner, and, um, 
that prey are like um, most of the prey that are on land are like bad. I, I don't think I don't think that Spinosaurus is ever going to get out of the water. No, but I don't think it can get out of the water. If it's like a, a drought and there's um, the rivers um, that um, are, are in its territory, um, and if it goes out of its territory, it could get harmed and maybe be killed. Um, what could it hunt um, um, on land that um, could I don't think you can hunt anything. There's nothing. He's going to eat fish until he runs out of fish, and then he's not going to. Then, then he's going to be food for somebody else. Yeah. How to find the go bunny site that that there's missing live dinosaur under it? Google, go fund me, and you'll, and then just go, go to G O F U N D M E, and then look up making a live dinosaur. And how much more money do you need? <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot. I need, I need a lot. But if you if you got an extra five bucks, that would help a lot. <laughs> that would help a lot. Yeah. yeah. So, the Pachycephalosaurus is, um, is a bone structure, the company physiology of like the neck, the shoulders are in the screw, they, they were um, bumping heads before, uh, before you even were able to uh, analyze the, the skull structure? The, the, uh, their neck vertebrae actually do have some interesting structures on them, but it appears to be to hold the head up. Yeah. Just, just to hold their head up. I mean, their head is really heavy. It's like it's kind of like a it's kind of like a uh, hornbill. A hornbill that has these really heavy heads. They have exactly the same kind of structures in their neck. And it looks like it's just to keep their head. I mean, really to help support their head. Yeah. Uh, yes, I had a question about your retro engineering project. Yep. Um, besides comparing what you've created to the fossil record, is there any indication that you're retracing the evolutionary path, the authentic one? The authentic one? Well, we can't really, we, we can't follow the authentic one uh, because we don't know that much about the evolution of chickens uh, because we're using chickens. But, but we are, you know, the idea is to use atavistic genes, and atavistic genes are ancestral. They are basically genes that have been turned off in the course of evolution. And we can't, you know, the tooth gene is that, we have that one. The, the cranial head, the cranial change is an atavistic gene. The hand is an atavistic gene. Uh, the, the leg and the foot are. It's just that the tail is. So, in order to make the tail, which is our last project to do, we are going to have to enlist CRISPR Cas9, which is genetic additive. Unfortunately, I didn't want to have to do that, but to make a dino chicken, we're going. That's what we're going to have to do. But it's pretty cool that we can do everything else using ancestral genes. I mean, that's really cool. Yeah. What about the teeth? What kind of teeth do you have? Well, the, the teeth that, that we're seeing are, we, we haven't got any to actually pop, um, to, to uh, grow out of the jaw. We, they're, in, they're tooth buds growing in the jaw, and they look a lot like um, crocodilian teeth. Mm -hmm. But we, don't, we won't know, uh, you know, reptiles replace their tooth teeth constantly. Um, and so we won't know what the mature teeth look like until they've regenerated maybe five or six times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think they were scavengers or predators? <clears throat> well, the, the dinosaur we're making is going to be a chicken. <laughs> 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 what, what, you know, going to go around and try to peck things. Thank <laughs> 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 <laughs>
version one dyno check end is not going to be a lot different than a check end. <laughs> it is going to have a long tail. It's going to have hands and arms instead of wings. So it's going to be pretty cool. But, you know, we have to get version one done before we can start actually adjusting other things. But, you know, the cool thing is, is that we can make other kinds of animals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people always say, well, why would you want to do that? And I'm always like, well, why would you want a chihuahua? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody started with a wolf and ended up with yeah. a wolf. I actually have two questions. So uh, one question is, if you're making a chicken into a dinosaur, so to say, you, does that mean that they could actually make a cat into a smilodon? No. Or, you know, no. give it longer teeth? Certainly not now. Well, okay. Um, second question is, um, if the T-Rexes were uh, scavengers, what what else would have been uh, killing the dinosaurs that they scavenged over? Dromaeosaurs, like Velociraptors. Dromaeosaurus. I think you know, it, I, people don't really appreciate how nasty a Velociraptor like a Dromaeosaur dinosaur it would have been. I mean, you know, modern raptors knock down their prey and stand on them and eat them alive. Raptorial dinosaurs have recurved spots. They can scale the prey. And we know they hunted in groups. So imagine five velociraptors this tall. They could scale the prey of anything. They could take down a T Rex more likely, right? You don't have to be big. We, we keep thinking of predator should be big. You don't need to be big. If you can scale your prey and have these razor sharp claws on your hind feet and on your hands, you can you can be just tiny. I would rather be in a room with you know six lions and a tiger than one velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> I know those lions and tigers are going to kill me first. Yeah. <laughs> The Velociraptors are going to climb on and start eating. <laughs> yeah. Is your idea about the T-Rex being a scavenger in the minority in academia? If so, is it yeah. a grunt? Okay. Okay. It's, in a, it's in the minority everywhere. Well, you know, I got, I got T-Rex scavenging in Jurassic Park 3. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, and then Find the stars, kill it. Who's a fish eater? Who is doing this? You said that in your in your research, you're creating a, a life years son, but you've terminated every specimen, so nothing is actually hatched alive yet, right? No, we haven't hatched them. Okay. We don't. I, my, uh, I, re I remember one of my postdocs was interested in, uh, they were interested in, they were trying to get the tooth bud to grow at least to the jaw line, mm -hmm. and so they let it develop a little bit longer, and, and they, <coughs> they said as soon as it started developing an eye, they, they, they didn't go down, they didn't really want to take it any farther, mm -hmm. and I don't like, you know, a tiny little embryo doesn't look like anything. And you, you really can't tell what it is. But as it begins to develop and start looking like a real animal, then, then you start thinking about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so they terminate it very early. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, you said the femur, usually faster animals have longer tibia or? Tibula. Longer tibia. Yeah. Longer tibia than their femur. Yeah, the so femur. Did, yeah. did that change throughout the Tyrannosaurus's growth? Yes, it did. Yeah. In young T. rexes, the, uh, the, there is a longer tibia than there is a femur. So they probably could run faster than an adult. Mm -hmm. But that's still, 
they still don't have the proportion that we see in Velociraptor or any of the dromaeosaurs. And maybe they had to just run fast to keep up with the exactly. And do you think that could have affected the way they hunt, like, well, found prey uh, as they grew? Or no, no, no. Find prey differently. The, the thing is, is that the dinosaurs can, could, you know, if they're anything like even comparable to a turkey vulture, a turkey vulture can <coughs> smell its its food 25 miles away. But you know, it's smelling something that's dead. Well, the dead thing isn't going anywhere. So, you know, 25 miles away, fine. You just walk to it. <laughs> if, if you're hunting something that's alive, you don't want to smell something 25 miles away. <laughs> right? right? You want to you want to be like the bloodhound. If you if you're going to hunt something down, you want to, you want to just be able to track it. Up. But a turkey vulture can't track. A turkey, a turkey, there's no possible way for a turkey vulture to track. It's going to smell something 25 miles away. So, do you think Tyrannosaurus rex could have been more of an opportunist? Or well, T. Rex was an opportunist. There's no doubt about that. I, I, uh, <laughs> you know. There, there, I don't think there's very many. There are not very many animals that wouldn't take down a stick animal. Or, you know, I mean, on the other hand, I like to say that T. Rex was an obligate scavenger. Just so my naysayers will have to come up with some real evidence <laughs> <laughs> rather than just their opinion. Because again. What they're doing is they're doing the same thing, they're basically, you know, ignoring basically everything I say and just saying, okay, here's a piece of evidence. This shows the T-Rex was a predator. Well, if you don't, if you if you're not going to look at the evidence against that, then that's not science. So I, you know, I I use T-Rex to teach kids about how we do science. And it doesn't matter whether T Rex is a predator or a scavenger. But if I say it's a scavenger, then that you really irritate them and then they go look for evidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, I, it's, it's possible, but yeah, and you know, that's how birds walk. I mean, if you if you bring the femur up parallel to the body, like birds walk, then it's going to lower the center of gravity, and then he's going to walk lower. Lower and more spot over the because there's uh, I mean, I don't have any idea of how and they say it's a more accurate model of the rest of the Yeah, I I don't know. I I think I think again, like I keep saying, I I think our ideas of how these dinosaurs look is really way really way out of whack. I mean, I just I don't think we know. I think we're yeah. I'm hopefully we're getting better and better at it, but I don't know. I mean, they had a long time to evolve. And we're learning an awful lot about them, but we're guessing a lot too. Mm -hmm. And just need more of them. Uh, you know. At the Museum of the Rockies, we have 13 Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons. Mm -hmm. And we still don't hardly know anything about them. But they're almost all overgrown. Mm -hmm. We don't have very many juveniles. Somebody was just, you know, a commercial collector just found a juvenile. We don't know where it came from, we don't know anything about it. They're trying to solve it for some millions of millions, millions of dollars. And maybe somebody will give it. Hopefully those people will give me some money first. Thank you very much. Thank you.